When renovating a house in Florida, you'll be surprised by some of the issues that you might run into that are different from other parts of the country. We're going to give you a few simple tips to help you when renovating your Florida home. We are Greg Nelson and Dominique Nelson and we are the owners of Nelson Construction and Renovations. So without further ado, we're going to get into the video and stay tuned to the end of the video for a contractor's secret you do not want to miss. Number one, do not use wood siding. In Florida, wood is not your friend. We recommend using something a little more impervious to the elements. On this project, we used a fiber cement material known as hardy board or hardy shingles. Yeah, in Florida, termites pretty much eat everything and so does dry rot. Um, this material is installed just like a roof, just like roof shingles. One goes here and then the next one goes above it. And it's a combination of uh, silica dust and uh, it's cementaceous. A lot of people use stucco in Florida as well. And stucco is basically cement, which is impervious to water, moisture. There are other alternatives to Hardy Board. James Hardy's been around forever. It's an Australian product. Uh, it's very popular. They have lots of different thicknesses and styles. They have the staggered edge, the horizontal siding, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's also Nichia and Allura, and they make a lot of really good products uh, for both residential and commercial. And on this particular project, we're going for a craftsman look, which is why we chose the hardy shingles as opposed to stucco. We also used a trim material known as Versatex, and it's basically a PVC material, also impervious to water and the elements. And we did this around the trim. This is actually a cellular PVC, so it's a little bit different than your normal, uh, something you might get in the big box stores. Uh, it's very, very easy to cut and shape. Um, and it's got a prorated lifetime warranty. I haven't quite figured out what that is yet, but that's what the manufacturer says. Um, we installed that on this house on the uh, casing and stuff. Yeah, one of the things that's cool with Versatex is they actually have a lot of dimensional, a lot of thicknesses that are odd sizes. Um, if you were to look on an old house, that's a, maybe a craftsman house that's 100 years old, they used uh, full dimension uh, lumber. We'll show you some pictures in a minute uh, where we did an actual craftsman style window that I actually designed myself. And uh, we, we pitched the sills so that they're down so the water comes off and we made a frame with a stool and a nice sill and a header piece. It's all very, uh, it holds true to the craftsman look. This stuff, you could basically wash this like a car once or twice a year and it will never dry rot. Um, your great grandkids will be, will be uh, maybe replacing it. Uh, you can leave it like this or you can, you can paint it. You can, it'll receive paint or you can just leave it like this. It's just an amazing product. Um, I think the homeowner's wife uh, was pretty uh, upset at the cost, uh, but, the homeowner, but the husband was very happy because he won't be having to fix any dry rot. <laughs> Number two, check to see if your home is in a floodplain. In Florida, if your house is below the base flood elevation, it will have to conform to the 50% rule which means that you can only do 50% of the value of the structure worth of renovations, remodeling, or upgrade to that home. That doesn't necessarily apply to decks and porches, pools, patio decks. It only has to do with interior heated square footage. You should check with your local municipality on the specifics for your home, but being in Florida, you definitely need to know about this before you encounter a renovation project. We have a wealth of information about this subject if you would like to know more, let us know in the comments below. Everything from permit applications to how to do a proper property appraisal, where not to get a property appraisal, you name it. Uh, I would say we pull maybe five to six permits a month and most of our jobs are all within the floodplain here in Florida, all up and down the beaches. So we definitely know what we're doing, let us know. Number three, buy hurricane windows or if you prefer, you can have hurricane shutters installed. However, we do not recommend this. If you do a non-impact glass type window, you're gonna to need to have a shutter, which is a plywood or some other means to put in front of the window, some other kind of superstructure. You're gonna to have to put in front of the window 
to block any flying or windborne debris during the, the course of a storm. A hurricane window with uh, low missile impact glass, you will need to put up a shutter. If you don't have a hurricane, win uh, an actual impact glass on your window, you're gonna have to have hardware sticking out all around the casing on the outside of that casing of that opening. And it's gonna have to be there all the time. And then if a hurricane's coming, you gotta run around, grab the plywood, stick it on there. So this window here that we use on this project is a, a Pella window. Uh, Pella does have a reputation for being more of a high-end window. They do have competitive lines uh, to PGT, Anderson, Jeldwin, that sort of thing. But in the norm, Pella is going to be a higher-end window. This is an architectural series. This is a very energy-efficient window. Uh, it's got it's a double-pane window. It's, it's low-E, Aragon gas, the whole nine yards. So you can get windows that are not that do not have impact glass in them, and they still have double pane. There's Aragon gas, low E, you can get all those features. Um, and there are areas on the water where you're just, they're gonna make you do impact glass, no matter what. So figure out what you're gonna do with your windows because they can take a lot of your budget. Now for the bonus tip. Earlier in the video, I talked about avoiding the use of wood in construction in Florida, especially because of termites. However, you have things like interior framing, roof trusses, and a lot of wood elements when you're doing construction. So how do you avoid termites? Well, we're gonna tell you how. We use this material here. It's called Timbor. And this is an insecticide and fungicide, and it protects against any kind of wood destroying insects. In Florida, there are a lot of different types of termites, um, but the, the two main ones that we can avoid are uh, subterranean termites which come up from under the earth and normally when someone's building a house they would spray the soil with a uh, pesticide that would prevent subterranean termites from coming up and eating your house however they will swarm the house and that's the kind that gets in your wood joists and in the walls interior walls and, and roof and things like that so this particular product Timbor is completely non-toxic it's essentially just salt and it comes in a, a white powder and you mix it with water and you put it in a paint sprayer and you just saturate every inch of wood in your home and those termites will not touch the wood because they will basically get, they'll dry up and burn from the inside out. So um, they avoid it like the plague. So if your house has been treated with Timbor, um, by a certified Timbor professional, they will actually give you a lifetime warranty on that wood and guarantee that you will not have a termite infestation. So we highly recommend this product. We use this on all of our, our own projects. Um, and uh, if, you, if you want to avoid termites, just definitely um, go to your local um, pesticide store and get yourself some Timbor and talk to your contractor about what actions they're taking to prevent termites in your home. This product will not off-gas like some other products will. You can use a paint sprayer, you mix this with water, it makes about 45 gallons, give or take. You can do a good size house with one five gallon bucket. Um, you can also use a, a pump sprayer uh, or a, just a hand spritzer or whatever, but if you're doing a whole house, you're gonna wanna drop a paint sprayer in here and, and just and shoot it everywhere. It's clear. Um, some guys will put a pigment in it, like food coloring, like blue food coloring dye. Um, and they'll put that in there in the material so they can see where they got everything. Some people will put a little bit of dish soap in it. It helps it soak into the wood a little bit more. And you can hire a professional to come and put this in. However, they're going to charge you a lot more. They are going to certify the longevity of the wood against termites. I have spoken to the vendor in, here in Clearwater, Florida about this product. And I asked him once, I said, well, what happens if I get termites and they come back in my house? in uh, a year or two or whatever and he said then you missed the spot so the product is really really good i don't think you need to pay the extra we just do it on every one of our projects it's a really good idea to do it when you're remodeling a house because at that time you're taking off drywall you're rewiring doing new plumbing new duct work what have you so not just use for new builds if you're doing a remodel even if it's just the kitchen get some timbor you don't have to get a five gallon bucket you can get a one gallon pail of it um, and then you, you get in there and you, you have your contractor spray it in there or do it yourself. It's really not that hard. You don't have to wear a jumpsuit and a mask or anything like that. You can go rinse off in the shower when you're done. And it's just an overall really great product for Florida. And being in Florida, you have to consider wood destroying organisms. 
Okay, in this house, we put the block was laid on top of the slab. This was an old house, and we did a lot of new block walls and on top of the existing slab, and it was basically modified quite a bit. But there's a joint between the block and, uh, and the slab right in here, all along the house here. And the mortar is, a cement, is, is cement, and it will expand and contract as it gets hot and cold. It'll move a little bit and little cracks called fissure cracks start happening and bugs can get in there specifically subterranean termites um, they can get through here then they can start working on the wood in this house so as you can see this black line that goes along here we just used an old paintbrush that was you know a throwaway brush and we use this product here this is uh, called fiber coat get it at home depot lowe's any roofing supply house it is a roofing product it's like thick toothpaste and you just smear it along the edge and it dries up real nice and it's a little bit elastomeric it's an excellent product it's used a lot for waterproofing but uh, the termites will not pass they, they shall not pass through that um, joint and so we do that all along the edges just to help with preventing any subterranean termites from coming inside the building okay guys thanks for watching our video if you have any other questions about construction in florida let us know in the comments below we'd love to hear from you if you liked our video, give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe.